Hello everyone, welcome back to Reflections. So today I want to talk a lot about David again. Um, a few weeks ago I made another video about David uh, with Goliath where I was just talking about the spiritual warfare aspect of, you know, seeing Goliaths and how we have to act like David and charge after uh, our Goliaths and, and see the spiritual battle that we're in and and have the faith that he had and know that it's the Lord who's helping him win the battle, not him. And um, I don't know. I just I'm just reading along through First and Second Samuel, and I'm you know I'm just looking at David and his life and his his time as king and everything like that. And it's just it's just a couple things I want to reflect on. So I think it's funny how you know his story starts out so crazy like that, right? And so just like it's everything everybody knows about David. They know that, and then they know about the whole Bathsheba thing. <laughs> And really hiding from Saul, like that's like the big things people know about David. And I just wonder, like, how you go from what he was, right? Now, according to God, his heart didn't really change, right? Because God still kept him in the standing in his eyes and righteousness that he was. And he did repent and he did, you know, cry out to the Lord and all those things through all these, all these things in his life. But... It's, it's like, how, how did he get there? How did he go from, well, I can slay lions and bears and this giant and all this because of God to, I mean, we know about running from Saul and that whole story, but like later he's, he's running from his son, right? From Absalom, who's trying to take over his kingdom and then kill him. And if you look through it, Everybody always says, like, okay, the Bathsheba thing did not start with, like, a lust sin, right? The whole, that whole event started with, like, he wasn't supposed to be, he he wasn't where he was supposed to be, right? Because he was supposed to be out uh, battling and doing war and everything with his, his troops that he was over. And he stayed home, essentially, right? So everybody says, like, okay, well, that's where it started. And then I'm watching the whole thing later with Absalom chasing him and and how that started and like I'm seeing like these little tiny things right like David David decided to stay home right and that turned into the lust thing and then the adultery thing and then the murder thing and the lying things and like all these things right and it just it just kind of festered and it just kind of grew and all this stuff and it's funny because I, I kind of aligned it then with Absalom a little bit. Now, we don't know as much about him. We just know, like, he's David's son. And it starts out, we're not really told anything about him except that his brother raped his sister, right? So that's how that whole, that's how he's brought into the story is that his brother rapes his sister. And he is wroth over it and ends up killing his brother right so you're like okay well that's good right justice like we're supposed to do that and he should love his sister and all that kind of stuff and it's like okay like we can kind of like say okay maybe that's not it's bad but it's not like you know this crazy wickedness thing it's a i love my sister and whatever you could twist it however you want but it's like that festers too I feel like right and it, it continues and it goes into this this thing where it grows with his father and all these back and forth sins and they just add on and they just pile on and then he's trying to take over his father's kingdom and he's trying to be king and he's he's basically out you know uh, you know petitioning for himself and getting people to be on his side and and all this stuff and then his father's literally running away like David runs away when he starts to plot like taking over his kingdom and then plots to kill him essentially and it's like what <laughs> like how did how did we get here like how did we get the running from Saul thing makes a little more sense but I mean Saul Goliath like I don't really know but um you're now running from your own son <laughs> who you know has done all these things you lived together in the same place with him for a while, but you never saw each other and completely ignored each other. There's a little section in there on that. And it's just like, how do we go from being so bold 
and so strong in faith in the Lord and, and saying, like, I take out lions and bears and giants because of God, only because of God, to letting sin go rampant in our life and then getting to these points where we're literally hiding in caves from people and we're literally our families are destroyed god did say after the whole bathsheba thing like if you read it he does say like you know your your house is gonna implode on itself like your children are gonna die and things are gonna happen and like here's what here's your uh discipline for what you did because you did a lot of bad stuff and then it happens and it's pretty traumatic so I don't know, people could say, well, you know, when you're young, because he was like 13, 14, whatever, something like that, when the whole, like, Goliath thing happened, like, well, you know, when we're young, we just have, we don't know any better, you know, and uh, we're just, we we just have blind faith, we have childlike faith, and it's so great, and, you know, you read in there, the Holy Spirit came on him, and all the things, and then later, it's just the total, total opposite. But when he does, like, again, you read, like, with Nathan and everything, when he does realize what he did, he's beside himself, you know, and he is repentant, and he is, like, holy cow. But I don't know. I just I just really wanted to, like, reflect on this whole thing of, like, you know, we're, like, preaching, like, yeah, be like David, be like David, be like David. And then it's like, well, but don't be like this part of David. <laughs> um, and watch the little things maybe, maybe that's my real like thing is it's real easy to sit and go through your life and be like, well, I'm not going to commit adultery or I'm not going to murder somebody for something, right? I'm it starts with like a tiny little thing, like well, you know, I just didn't go to battle that day. Or, you know, like I got really jealous of this person because they had this and I had this problem going on. And then it turned into like really hating that person. And then, you know, I really just found myself thinking this and thinking that. And then, oh, you killed someone out of just being jealous about something. And it's like, it's always the little, little, little things, I think, that start all this stuff like no one wakes up and oh, I'm gonna kill someone today it just doesn't happen I'm, I'm pretty sure David didn't do that <laughs> uh, he just thought like I'm not going out and these things just kind of festered so and Absalom again was just trying to you know have justice for his sister and and do what he thought was right because someone did something really terrible to his sister most people would say that's admirable even though you shouldn't kill people um and look what look what it turns into so i don't know guys i guess reflect on where you're at all the time in all these things like we have to look for the little sins we have to pay attention to everything we have to have such a great relationship with the holy spirit like like again how it says back in first samuel with david like that the holy spirit was with him and that's why he was the way he was well if the holy spirit's with you and you're feeling convicted and you're feeling all these things if he's driving you to have faith he's going to drive you to conviction as well right so we have to listen to that like we can't ignore it or like it says in the old testament the holy spirit will will leave you yeah he'll do that too he's not going to hang out with you while you're sinning all day long like that that doesn't that doesn't mix god doesn't god doesn't take part in sin so if you want to have the holy spirit you need to like be living right as a Christian. So pay attention to the Holy Spirit. Pay attention to the conviction that he's bringing on you all the time for all the little tiny things. When you are talking to your friend and you just like without thinking blurt out some little tiny fib or some little tiny lie and God like gives you that two seconds of feeling like I shouldn't have done that. Like pay attention to it. Even if it's something stupid, call your friend and be like, hey, I'm, I don't even know why I lied about that really dumb little thing. It was no big deal, Like I, but I did. I lied about it. Your friend won't even care. But like, that's important. That step is important because, again, all those things fester. They all fester and they all turn into something huge. And then all of a sudden, you're hiding in a cave. You've killed people. You've taken over kingdoms. You've destroyed things, and you're a hot mess. But thankfully, like we know, like David, um, 
God still loves you. God still uh, had a lot of great things to say about David, and he takes up like half of this entire book for the, for the most part. So don't condemn yourself. Don't let the enemy beat you up over it. Just get right. Get right. Listen to God. Listen to the Holy Spirit. Repent and just pay attention going forward. So, guys, please share this video because we all need to think about these things. I love you and God loves you. Have a great week.